Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Professor Claire Rusbridge and I'm a veterinary neurologist and I'm particularly passionate about a disease called syringomyelia. And this is really because I described the first few cases in dogs after I saw Bo in 1995, who was presented to me with a number of strange signs, including scratching at his shoulders. I couldn't explain these signs. It proved an enigma for quite some time until I had a couple of other cases and also finally access to MRI uh, because that technology was not initially available. So what we're going to talk about in this video is the clinical signs of canine Chiari and also of syringomyelia. Enjoy. So what are the clinical signs of canine Chiari and syringomyelia? Well, we're talking about two different but connected diseases here. The first is canine Chiari, where there is overcrowding of the brain. And the second is syringomyelia, where there's fluid cavitation of the spinal cord. This disease is made more complicated by the fact that in the breeds that are predisposed to it, pretty much all of them have the abnormality to some extent, but it's the more extreme ones that will have disease. This video comes from the uh, first in the series of these YouTube videos, and it shows a morph between a normal dog on the left, through a dog with Chiari pain, through to the ultimate extreme of a dog with syringomyelia. Chiari-like malformation is where you have some overcrowding of the brain. The brain is not able to freely move in the uh, in the skull and through the neck it has reduced compliance as a result and there is obstruction of the flow of the cerebral spinal fluid out of the brain ventricular system and obstruction of its movement around the brain and the spinal cord this obstruction of fluids or the lack of compliance of the brain or other factors uh, result in a syndrome of pain i say or, or, or that is because we actually don't know the absolute mechanism of pain in dogs affected with this in humans. Uh, we are making some assumptions based on what is most likely. We also have syringomyelia where we have fluid that's very similar in structure to the cerebral spinal fluid, which is forced into the spinal cord, damaging the spinal cord. And this has its own set of clinical signs and also uh, will result in pain. This is actually quite a difficult disease to diagnose, especially canine Chiari pain. And the reason for that really is, is twofold. The first is that most dogs of the breeds that are, are predisposed to canine Chiari and syringomyelia will have a degree of Chiari malformation on an MRI scan. So it can be very difficult to determine the ones that have um, Chiari pain versus the ones that are free of clinical signs. And the other reason is that the diagnosis is by MRI and unfortunately MRI is expensive. And so uh, one thing that I'm developing is this Chiari Checker. This is an app which generates a, a CM uh, pain and a syringomyelia score or SM score. Um, it's in a, a period of transition. So this will depend when you uh, are looking at this video. Um, it was uh, previously on a, a render website and it's ultimately going over to a website on uh, Surrey University. Um, it's in the process of transition at the moment, but I would compel veter veterinarians and owners to use this app. It's completely free of charge. It is a work in progress, so it will get more accurate as, as we get more data. Uh, but this will help tell whether or not a dog is likely to have the disease before you go to the expense of an MRI, or perhaps an MRI is just beyond um, you financially or geographically, because not everybody has um, availability just from a geographical point of view. So first we're gonna talk about Chiari uh, um, uh, malformation and the signs it's associated with, and that is undoubtedly pain. And this is Charlie, is one of my patients who's affected by this condition. This lovely picture of Charlie shows you when he's a happy dog, but um, he can be affected by this condition 
uh, and this shows Charlie on a bad day. We have permission from Charlie's mum uh, to use these pictures. And this particular bad day was when the pressure was rapidly changing because th uh, there was uh, thunderstorms forecast. Um, and so Charlie was pretty well managed on medication most of the time, but sometimes he had a very bad day. And you can see um, from this, I think we'd all agree with him that, that Charlie looks like he has a headache. His eyes are partially closed. Um, he has more of a worried expression rather than this nice relaxed expression here. Um, and his head is down and he just looks miserable. And so these Chiari pain signs, they relate to the brain having less freedom to move, the contents being under pressure. And so the signs that we see, the clinical history that we, uh, that we observe, relates to signs of pain. And some are more common than others. The most common sign is vocalisation, if you, screaming if you have it. Um, many owners of that describe this being spontaneous. Obviously nothing spontaneous, it's just that it may not be clear what the, um, the reason is. Or when they're changing their position, for example, shifting slightly uh, um, uh, when they're sleeping. And it's not unusual of these dogs to, to scream out when uh, they're changing position or, or, or just waking up. And another very common reason to vocalise or, or groan is when they're lifted under the armpits, especially if they're lip it, lifted up rapidly, you know, a bit like a sack of potatoes rather than being lifted up gently and, um, and, and keeping their spine straight. Vets, you should definitely bear this in mind um, because quite often these dogs will yelp as you pick them up to put them onto the consulting room uh, table. They will, can have spinal sensitivity and bear in mind they can have these signs without syringomyelia. So without having actually damage to their spinal co cord, they can have sensitivity in their neck at the junction between their rib cage and their lumbar lower spine and uh, at the lumbar sacral junction, which is the lower back. Many owners report that their dogs are, are less inclined to exercise, so they may have been not able to, to, to do a normal length walk, not able to go more than, uh, than 30 minutes, for example, or they may be initially interested in playing, but rapidly stop um, or have uh, completely ceased uh, playing. Uh, another common sign is scratching or rubbing of the head, the ears or the facial region. We're going to talk about different types of scratching and this is quite specific. So they're actually making contact with um, the back of their head typically. And this is without syringomyelia. This is presumed to relate to having discomfort at the back of the head or perhaps discomfort in the ear region. And of course, we can't ask the dogs what they're feeling. Um, but I have uh, spoken to many people with Chiari uh, uh, malformation and many of them have told me that they have headaches and that headache is uh, often at the back of their head. And they'll also have a feeling of fullness in their ear region, which can be uh, uncomfortable. This is often a pain related to posture and so they may have difficulty when they rapidly change their posture and this might be ev evident because they may refuse or have difficulty doing jumping or may refuse to go up um, uh, stairs and perhaps be comfortable coming downstairs or, or vice versa. Pain changes your outlook on life and many of the dogs are described as having a behavioural change, perhaps becoming more anxious or becoming withdrawn or perhaps more aggressive. I put that in, in inverted commas because very careful in uh, um, categorising a dog as aggressive. I prefer to say that um, they're either more grumpy, um, uh, less tolerant of other dogs or humans or perhaps they ha have had to learn how to communicate because they have a headache. Can you imagine how difficult it might be if you had a headache um, and you decided to withdraw from your family, you know, go and sit in a quiet, dark place. These are all behaviours that people might do if they had a headache. Imagine if you're a dog and you sort of oh, take yourself off to your bed and then somebody comes along and says, oh no, why are you sitting on your bed? Um, oh, you're so cute. Let me pet you. 
Now, if you had a headache, you really wouldn't want that to happen. Um, and you may have to use some sort of means to communicate to the human why you wouldn't want that to happen. And unfortunately, we humans are very bad at reading uh, dog's behaviour. And so the dog may have to escalate that up until we can actually understand. Uh, and what we often tend to understand is if a dog growls or tr tries to bite us. These dogs can be painful to touch, so they may show an aversion to touch, especially around their ears. They may not like to be groomed, um, uh, uh, and uh, they may also show an aversion to touch at other parts. And because they're in pain, they may have sleep disruption or uh, nighttime restlessness, so frequently getting up or changing position. And they may also have a tendency to have a, an abnormal sleeping posture, for example, having their head raised. So uh, this dog here is sitting on the back of a sofa. Um, she's very conveniently taught her owner to use a cushion to help her make it a little bit more comfortable. Uh, her bottom is, is, is much lower than her head and she's uh, resting her head on this this cool surface on this lovely mahogany top here. This dog used to sleep with his head curled round uh, the back of a uh, chest of drawers. So pain. These are all signs of Chiari-like malformation, associated pain, and making a diagnosis can be quite challenging, but it, it relies on, um, on really knowing that you have a collection of these signs like this, um, and saying yes, if you have more than uh, a few of these signs, then it's much more likely, especially if you can rule out other causes of pain, uh, it, such as slit discs or um, uh, um, other causes of neck pain and, and reasons for having ear pain and scratching. Syringomyelia, however, relates to spinal cord damage. And the way I describe this really is to imagine that the spinal cord is a cake. Um, uh, this cake is fulfilling all its cake-like functions. It's full of calories, it's full of deliciousness, and it's uh, going to cause a lot of pleasure when you eat it. Now, if I put a simple hole in this cake and make it a donut, it's still a cake. It still is going to cause pleasure, still going to fill a lot of cake-like functions, and still um, uh, have a lot of calories. And this really describes a mild syringomyelia, where there's a small cavity within the spinal cord or a small central canal dilatation, but otherwise the dog is completely normal, what we call an asymptomatic syringomyelia. However, if that damage perpetuates and gets much bigger, then there will be significant loss of the cake and a significant loss of the cake-like function or, or calories. And so a very wide syrinx is going to result in clinical signs, or one that damages uh, a, a very specific area very conclusively, and especially in the area that we call the dorsal horn, which is a sort of um, two o'clock and 10 o'clock location on the spinal cord um, uh, uh, as you uh, look at it. So one of the most classic signs of syringomyelia is uh, phantom scratching. And, and for this, I have to thank Jemima Harrison of Pas Passionate Productions for this video. Uh, and what you see here, first of all, is this dog, Sylvie, is rubbing her head. Now, this is signs of Chiari pain. This is not signs of phantom scratching. It moves to her being outside and we can see this rhythmic like action is stimulated and triggered by walking, especially on the leash with a neck collar. And you can see this sort of rhythmic action without actually making contact with the neck. Some breeders refer to that as playing the air guitar. And when the dog does this, it takes a sort of curved posture and turns its head towards the, the scratched limb um, and has that kind of twisting action as if it's putting its limb its head towards the scratch limb but it's not actually making contact. So it's sort of scratching towards the neck or the shoulder area typically to one side and it's triggered by contact. You can trigger it by rubbing the area of skin that's associated with the, the, the syrinx, the so-called dermatone associated with the syrinx. It's triggered by excitement and it's triggered by walking and they often don't uh, make contact. Now for all your, you vets out there, 
Head scratching or other types of scratching is not phantom scratching. Phantom scratching is this very specific scratching action, but they can scratch their heads, back of their heads, as we saw in the early part of the video, and that is related to pain at probably at the back of the head. And this phantom scratching is very similar to the fictive scratching. I don't suppose that you can, you can read this uh, area of highlighted text, but this text comes from this very old book uh, written by Sherrington in 1905 called Reflex Activity of the, of the Spinal Cord. And he's describing the exact posture. And actually to read it out, he says, a rhythmic scratching movement involving the digits, ankle, knee and hip. There's further the postural flexion of the limb as a whole and steady incurvation of the body with the neck deviated and the head partially turned back for the foot more ready to, to readily to reach it. And he created these animals with this fictive scratching by doing a rather horrible thing. He, he, he transected the spinal cord um, uh, between uh, C7 and T1 and, uh, and other places. He did it in cats at, um, at C1. And then he kept the animals alive afterwards. And then the dogs he did this with, they, they're, they're, um, they were obviously paralysed. And they developed this phantom scratching, even though they were paralysed. Now, of course, the dogs with syringomyelia aren't paralysed. And uh, this scratching action is due to this damage in this area of the spinal cord, which is called the dorsal horn. And you tend to get it um, with uh, uh, syrinxes or syringomyelia that is in the mid cervical region and where they're very wide so they extend to this dorsal horn. You can also get it with uh, syrinxes that are here and they tend to scratch their sternum there. So here is our analogy again. We have a donut like spinal cord syrinx and this is probably clinically irrelevant although there's quite a big hole in the spinal cord. The spinal cord is, it isn't expanded too much and there are enough neurons protected that this dog doesn't have clinical signs. Whereas this, the same volume of syrinx, but going out in this jagged way, right out to the side of the spinal cord in this, this two o'clock and 10 o'clock position um, is, is damaging uh, this area of the dorsal horn, which is very important um, to do with sensation, pain sensation, um, superficial sensation, so um, skin sensation, and also involved with the scratch reflex. And it seems that when this is damaged, we get this maladaptive scratch reflex and um, we also get um, uh, pain. Um, and uh, the um, one other thing that I wanted to say is that this is the orientation for a dog or cat MRI. This is the top of the back here, and this is going towards the belly down the bottom here. Humans have it upside down, um, and it's because humans lay on their back when they have the MRI. Uh, and here I wanted to point out that this is the dog's brain, and this is the dog's spinal cord coming down here. This is the top of the neck here. This is the shoulder blade. This bit here is an artifact due to the microchip. People, I mention that only because people always ask what it is. Um, and the syrinx is represented by this white structure inside the spinal cord um, and the um, phantom scratching is associated with the syrinx between those two yellow lines and the asterisk indicates the syrinx. The other thing that you can get with damage to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord is uh, scoliosis, twisting of the spine, uh, which is really probably more correctly called a cervical torticollis. And this is because it damages um, something called proprioception through uh, the neck. Um, the, the information about where your neck is in space is conveyed down here. Um, and uh, this makes sure that your neck is always upright, that it's always in a straight line. Um, you try and turn your head to the side. Ultimately, your body will correct it and make it um, straight again. And when you damage this dorsal horn, then it interferes with that information and you get a misbalance going to the muscles. Um, and so the what you find is that the shoulder is pushed out um, on the same side as the dorsal horn involvement. 
and the head is tilted down opposite to the side of the dorsal horn involvement. And the interesting thing is that the dogs seem to compensate uh, for that. And although they can be very, very dramatic like that early on in life, and often this develops in very young puppies before they develop the fictive uh, scratching, the phantom scratching, um, this, this um, scoliosis will often improve over the years, no matter what happens to the syrinx. Uh, and so uh, the syrinx will just remain unchanged, but this can improve. If you damage this area of the spinal cord here, this is involved with um, uh, the, the, the nerve cells uh, that are the motor neurons going to the limb. Um, and also we have information coming in this part of the spinal cord about where the foot is in, in space. And so if we damage that, then we find that the dog becomes very weak in their forelimbs. And then they can also become very weak across their, their back. And they may have uh, difficulty recognizing where their foot is in space and they may drag their foot. And this is meant to show that this foot is dirty and the, and the hair is broken because this dog is, is dragging uh, this foot. Now, uh, because this is something that's affecting the central part of the spinal cord, you get um, thoracic or forelimb weakness, but the strength in the, in the uh, back legs, the pelvic limbs, is preserved. Um, and this is what we call a central um, spinal cord myelopathy. And it's really quite classic signs. And so these dogs do not get paralyzed in their in their back legs, something we're going to, to come back to. And that's because the uh, information going to the back legs is really preserved through um, the, the outer white matter in the spinal cords. It all gets pushed to the edge and there's enough there to preserve that walking ability. So weakness in the front legs or weakness in the spine. And we can see this dog really has a very marked lordosis. Uh, and interestingly, this owner managed to improve this in her dog, not with surgery or with drugs, but just with hydrotherapy, which shows that neurology is not all about the clever surgery and, uh, and the potent drugs. You can actually improve a lot of their strength just by, uh, by physiotherapy. And this also shows the trauma done to the, to the fallen digits because they're not picking up their fit properly. They have a proprioceptive deficit. This is more for the neurologist that might be uh, watching. Uh, and I'm sorry for the blurry picture, but it was difficult to capture this um, from a video. A study coming out of the Royal Veterinary College noticed that they had a tendency for overshooting. Uh, um, and you can certainly see this more dramatically on some dogs. So this dog is in the process of turning and we can see this hypermetric overshooting action of the foot. And you may notice that as you walk the dog. Uh, uh, up and down, and that's thought to relate to compression of the cerebellum. Now, I'd like to point out there are other neurological diseases, especially in the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. And not everything that you see that is neurological in these dogs is attributed to syringomyelia. And unfortunately, this has been perpetuated in the literature a little bit with a lot of people inappropriately uh, calling some diseases due to uh, syringomyelia when they are absolutely not. And this is partly because those diseases often will have unremarkable MRI. And so basically the, uh, the dog is being investigated for that disease and the MRI is done and the MRI finds a syringomyelia and uh, people uh, take two and two and make 664. Uh, so just bear in mind that there are other diseases. It's particularly epilepsy. This is repeated seizures. Syringomyelia is a spinal cord disease. It can't cause something going on in this forebrain. Uh, fly catching is not associated with syringomyelia. Facial paralysis is not associated with syringomyelia. Neither is vestibular disease, which is a balance disorder. And just bear in mind that they may have other spinal cord diseases, especially if they're acute onset pain. Syringomyelia and Chiari pain often has a very chronic history. It may present quite uh, uh, reasonably acutely, but when you go back through the history, there may be a much longer history of yelping um, when the dog is defecating, for example, or yelping when they're being picked up under the shoulders. Whereas intervertebral disc diseases 
is very suddenly painful and severely painful. And then we have degenerative myelopathy associated with the SOD1 mutation. Uh, this is present in many breeds. It's classically associated with large breed dogs such as German Shepherds. But the mutation is relatively common in Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. And in these, there is a progressive loss of um, hind limb function. And again, you may do an MRI scan and find a syringomyelia, but it's important to be aware of these other diseases and particularly for this one, test for the mutation. So that ends this little video. Uh, in the next installments, we're going to talk about treatment and then there'll be one on MRI interpretation. And this again is just to show the pain face. This is Molly, thanks to Cavalier Matters for this and the picture of Aaron in the previous image. Um, where she's showing Molly with a pain face before she had any medication. You can see her worried little expression and then after medication. So that ends our little jaunt through the clinical signs of Chiari-like malformation and syringomyelia. The take home message is that Chiari-like malformation results in pain. Sometimes that can be a difficult diagnosis, so it's important to take a good history and look at a number of clinical signs. And if there is a large collection of them, then it, it makes the diagnosis much more likely. To try and aid that, I'm creating an app um, of which the details are going to be in the Precy below, especially if it as it's uh, changing to a different website at the current time. And that app will hopefully help give a, a, a CM pain score and an SM score, uh, which will help tell whether or not the dog is likely to have the disease before pursuing those expensive MRI. Syringomyelia, however, damages the spinal cord and you get some very specific spinal cord uh, signs such as phantom scratching, weakness, especially of the thoracic limbs, Difficulty knowing whether limbs are in space, so knuckling over or perhaps having a high stepping gait. And, um, and in some cases, scoliosis or twisting of the spine. In our next instalments, we're going to talk about treatment, the all important treatment, and also how to interpret an MRI scan. And look out for the videos on other diseases such as intervertebral disc disease. Thank you very much.